Ladies and gentlemen, with all of the discussion of VRAM capacities over the past several months, it's nice that NVIDIA seem to be listening, as there is a fascinating piece of news that I want to be covering in this video, where allegedly we will be seeing an RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but this seems to be a separate model to the 8 gigabyte card which is also planning to launch. We're going to be tackling all of that, plus some stuff for Titan, yeah, again, and also some updates I've been hearing regarding price for NVIDIA and AMD's mid-range GPUs and also just a couple of tidbits concerning Blackwell. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So as you can see on screen, Megasize GPU states that the announcement for the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte will be in May, along with the release of the card. The 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte will also be announced in May, probably alongside it, but the release will not be until July. And the 4060 8 gigabyte will see an announcement in May and also see a July release date. Now here's where things get kind of interesting. The card themselves basically have identical specifications, so 4352 CUDA cores, 128-bit bus, but the 16 gigabyte will be in a clamshell configuration. So the um, 4060 vanilla, however, will have 3072 CUDA cores. Now, I've actually been discussing the fact that NVIDIA will almost certainly release higher capacity VRAM models for the 4060, I was told, as well as the 4050. I didn't know specifically about the 4060 Ti, but honestly, this is very part and parcel of NVIDIA's MO. Now, my personal advice to you guys, don't buy the eight gigabyte card, don't do that. Buy the, six, buy the 16 or just don't buy this card at all. The reason is because I think it's really important for us to start sending companies, AMD and NVIDIA, a message that, look, VRAM capacities need to start going up. Now, there is, you know, cool stuff happening like sampler feedback, direct storage, a load of other crap. But ultimately, A, games developers need to actually code it. B, more VRAM is always good. And C, it's like, 2023 i mean i don't have a watch on me but pretend there is a watch here uh you know if an editor wants to put like a watch on me that would be great but anyway being serious for a moment it's like 2023 we've had these vram capacities for god knows how long at this point you probably see barney the dinosaur walking down the street holding his like you know gtx 960 and honestly there's not that much difference in vram capacity now i am being a little bit sarcastic but it's way past the time that we need to start adding more vram as a slight story, um, over the weekend, I was actually at my friend's place and we were doing like a Resident Evil marathon. We completed Resident Evil 1, as well as a good portion of Resident Evil 2. Um, I was playing on my laptop, which is outfitted with an RTX 3060M. And always great with Resident Evil 1, of course, that thing can essentially run on a potato. We are, of course, we're, we're talking about the remake, but Resident Evil 2, um, that thing actually has quite high VRAM requirements, and FSR 1 doesn't exactly have great visual clarity. So the problem was that uh, I really need to, start to turn down some of the texture detail, some of the shadow detail, and yeah, it's a little frustrating because the frame rate was decent, but you just got these like stutters because again, VRAM. Now you can argue that, well, you know, different engines handle things differently, but again, more VRAM at this point is just required. So I also want to discuss pricing because I've received a few updates here. Yet another person has told me that we're looking at 399 to 430 US dollars for the 4060 Ti. I'm guessing that this is the eight gigabyte model. I will be very curious to see what Nvidia charges for this 16 gigabyte. I would love for the 399 
to be the eight gigabyte and then the 16 gigabyte not cost that much more let's say free uh, 430 or something like that but it is nvidia i've been told that the 4060 vanilla is 100 us dollars less so it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of low 300 us dollars for the 4060 vanilla the 7600 uh, from AMD, meanwhile, is 329, but that's MSRP. Strange thing is, a source is actually telling me that it's possible some AIB cards will be below MSRP at launch, so around the very low 300 US dollar mark. I also want to give you guys a very small update concerning Titan. Now, this has been a card that honestly has undergone a lot of starts and stops in terms of its project along with the RTX 4090 Ti. Now a source has basically told me, and this is last minute, so I'm trying to get some clarity on some points here, but I was told that the 4090 Ti is probably dead, at least for the short term. And instead, Nvidia are focusing yet again on Titan. The specifications haven't changed a whole lot. We're probably looking at like 142 SM, and of course it's going to have double the VRAM. So we're looking at 48 gigabytes. Again, the specifications, there seems to be multiple variants being tested. Um, so I'm trying to get some more clarification on exactly what, which card is the most likely to launch. There's not a whole bunch more to say about this GPU. Of course, it will have a little more cash as well. And the additional SMs mean it will be faster than the 1490 for gamers but obviously it's also going to be considerably more expensive and this is a card that it will be great for like 3d artists that type of thing um i'm sure gamers will want it who have like the cash to splurge because it will be the fastest card until rtx 50 comes out or whatever but it will be very curious to see if it actually launches what the marketing will be like around this gpu and speaking of RTX 50, also known as Blackwell, I'm going to give you guys an update actually to Blackwell. So a while ago, I put out a video with some of these specifications and some of the information I'd been uh, hearing about Blackwell, including the fact it was allegedly using TSMC's free NM process. Now, Kopitai 7 Kimi on Twitter has actually stated previously that he thinks that this information was wrong, but since he's put out an update and said that actually he thinks that information was correct. And this is not um, a mark against Kopitai. Honestly, first of all, we're dealing with information from multiple sources. Sometimes typos happen, uh, translation issues happen, and honestly, his track record for NVIDIA has been absolutely stellar, especially when it came to the RTX 30 series, like he was, and RTX 40 series, he was pretty much bang on the money. So absolutely no, you know, hard feelings. Everyone is wrong. Everyone is allowed to be incorrect or their source is just wrong or whatever. And it happened to me like hundreds of times, everyone is wrong and that's cool. But he thinks now that the free NM process is probably correct with TSMC. And that's still what I'm hearing. And you may recall, again, that I've put out performance targets and some information on the RX 50. And this is where it's kind of ironic because even my information now is starting to change a little bit. You can see on screen the slide, TSMC's free NM customized for NVIDIA, massive overhaul of the architecture. SM units now get a new structure, advanced denoising. All of this stuff seems to still be the same with high clock frequency targets. But if you look at the performance targets here versus the previous generation, we're looking at two to 2.6 times. Now that's quite a large range. And the reason is, is because GB100 is going to basically be a GPU, at least to my understanding, which is aimed at the data center, but probably going to be MCM. Um, and it has uh, 256 SM unless something has changed. But now I'm hearing that they are starting to do, well, basically testing, internal benchmarks, basically simulations to figure out actually how this stuff is performing. And according to the source that gave me some of this information, um, and again, I'm trying to clarify and get more updates to this. This stuff has just come out last minute, basically. Um, it's not performing as well as what NVIDIA have hoped for. So there's a possibility they will need to ramp up the number of SM. I'd heard previously that the higher end models, which would be like the 5090 or whatever, the 102, that would go up to 144 SM. Now that of course means it would be identical, at least in terms of the full die configuration to the previous generation. And they were getting this um, performance targets basically with a combination of a whole new architecture. There was a lot of changes in, again, 
um, ray tracing, uh, the actual SM, sorry, the SM structure itself, the GPU, it was having a much higher clock frequencies, but allegedly it's not hitting the performance targets, which are around two times for the gaming variants that Nvidia had hoped for. Now, again, you want to take this stuff with a pinch of salt because, well, yeah, multiple sources will probably tell you different things. And I'm going to be very interested as we get closer to the launch of these new cards and we get much more solid information. But how I'm hearing things at the moment is that it's probably more performing like Pastel to Turing, at least in standard raster tests, which again is not the direction NVIDIA want to go. They want to go for higher performance. So it's probable that NVIDIA will need to ramp up the specifications compared to how they were. I'm putting this into the video because I think it's quite interesting. Uh, it's a good talking point. I will be very curious to see what the final results of this are. I will say that I'm not particularly confident about this information yet because again, first of all, my source themselves were just saying that this is what they've been hearing, they need to do verification, and again, it is only from a single source. But it is quite interesting that we're already starting here, so many different um, leaks already coming from Blackwell, as well as RDNA 4. I will be very curious to see what the next generation of graphics actually bring us. I think path tracing is going to become a lot more prevalent in games titles, but at the end of the day, of course, we're still quite early in the ray tracing slash path tracing journey. With all of that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, well, you know what to do. It's uh, YouTube. See you soon. Take care. Bye for now.